Hello everyone, welcome back. Um, so uh, as we are talking about primary indexing. So now uh, when we have a indexing as we are talking about that indexing is the secondary access structure. So secondary access path to find a record. So without indexing what actually we are supposed to do that uh, when we are going to searching a record we are going to search in the original data file. Okay. But with the indexing, what actually we are going to do, we are going to find the record in the index. Okay, we are going to find the appropriate index entry. All right. And from the index entry, we are going to find the block where we are, where we have the record that we are looking for. Okay. Now, that means actually, as we know that the number of index entry for the sparse index, especially for this primary index, the number of index entry is much less than the number of records in the file okay the number of index entry is uh, a lot less than the number of total records in the file so when we are going to look for a record uh, initially we are going to look for a record in the index entry this is going to be actually much more efficient okay so let's see an example the first example we'll see that uh, what will be the number of block access without the indexing okay so we have a we are going to see an example with an ordered file and this ordered file is ordered on a key field okay so if this is the example in that case uh, without the primary indexing meet, uh, means with the original data file what will be the number of block access okay and then we are going to see an example uh, if we implement the index what will be the number of block access all right all right so let's see so in the example uh, we have an ordered file where uh, the number of record is 300,000 okay so these records are stored in the disk block of size block 4096 byte so uh, the this is the size of block the records are ordered on a key field each record are of fixed size and each record has size 100 byte so how many block access is required for binary search without indexing okay without primary index so this is an ordered file so we can e implement binary search but the first example we are going to see without indexing means we are going to do the binary search on this original data file all right so um first we are going to see the block factor okay first we are going to calculate the block factor block factor means so the block factor means uh, actually number of record in each block number of records we can store in each block and how we can calculate that we are going to do the block size 4096 byte divided by uh, the record size okay each of the record is fixed size and each of the record has size 100 byte okay and we are going to do the flooring function all right so this is 40 records so as we are going to store only integral number of record so that's why we are using flooring function means after we store 40 record in one block okay so it has size 4096 byte and each of the record has size 100 byte okay so we can store actually 40 record so after we store 40 record there will be like 96 byte uh, will be left alone okay there will be 96 byte empty uh, empty uh, size in the block but still we, we are going to store only integral number of record okay so we can store 40 record in each block okay this is blocking factor so if in each block we can store 40 record then how many record we are going to need to store all the record okay we have 300,000 record okay and in each block we can store 40 record so what is the number of block so B is the 
number of blocks to store all record okay number of blocks to store all records so this will be r divided by bfr okay so we can see that um 40 records we can store in one block so how many block we need to store all these records so this will be total number of records divided by bfr okay and here we are going to use ceiling function all right so this will be 300000 divided by 40 okay and uh, here we can find actually 7500 zero zero blocks means we need total 7 uh, 7500 blocks to store all the records okay so why actually we are going to use here ceiling uh, we are going to use here ceiling function okay so because like how many blocks we are going to need so we may find a few blocks where uh, we are going to store only couple of records so that block can have few places left okay but here we are going to use ceiling function because that many uh, that many total number of blocks we are going to need okay so here we will need 7500 blocks okay so now without indexing you can see that here we have a uh, total number of uh, if the number of records is 300,000 and the block size is 4096 byte let's see we, we are going to need 7500 7500 blocks okay now as this is the ordered file we can we are going to implement binary search okay so if we implement binary search uh, as we know that how we are going to actually how how do you access record from the database management system how do we uh, access the record from the secondary storage what do we do actually we are going to actually access the block where our file is okay we are going to access the block where sorry we are going to access the block where our record that we are looking for okay we are going to access this block to our primary memory and then we are going to work with this block so the number of block access is going to be with the binary says the number of block access is log 2 base b okay all right so it will be log 2 base b means log 2 base 7500 so this is going to be 13 uh, i mean this is going to be actually 12 point something i guess this is going to be 12 point something but um, uh, so we are going to use the ceiling function and this this will be 13 block access okay so without the primary indexing if we are going to access if if we are going to find the record from the original data file we are going to need the 13 block access to find a record okay with the ordered file and if uh, as we are implement using binary searching all right now we are going to see with the primary indexing how uh, this searching is going to look like okay how many block access we are going to need with the primary indexing so for the primary indexing for the primary indexing we are going to need a auxiliary data structure where we are going to store each of the index entry okay so each of the index entry has two field the primary key value and the block pointer okay so we need to know what is the size of each of the index entry so here it is given that each of the key field value is 9 byte okay so index entry has the first value is the key field value okay and the second value is the block pointer so the key field value is 9 byte and the block pointer has size 6 byte okay 
so the index entry where uh, the first is the key field value it has 9 byte and the second is the block pointer which will point to the block this is 6 byte okay so the whole index entry size is so the size of the index entry is v plus p is 15 byte okay all right all right now we are going to calculate how many block access is required to search an entry using the primary index all right now this each of the index file we are going to also store them in block okay each of the block size is 4096 byte so for index entry to store the index entry we are going to calculate the blocking factor for indexing okay blocking factor for indexing that's why we are using the i to uh, denote that this is the blocking factor to store the index entry now the index size is 15 byte and the block size is 4096 byte so this will be 4096 divided by 15 okay and that is 273 entries per block okay So that means in each block we can store 273 entries. All right. All right. Now how many index entry we are going to need? So total what is the number of index entry? As we talked about the number of index entry will be the number of blocks. Okay. For each block for primary index for each block we are going to have an index entry. So the number of index entry will be the number of index entry is the number of blocks and what is the number of blocks here this is 7500 block okay so the number of index entry is 7500 so here in the same uh, using the same example you can see that we are going to have a 7500 index entry okay sorry so this will be actually number of blocks this is actually number of index entry So now we are going to calculate bi which is the number of blocks to store all index entries. okay and this value will be we have 7500 index entry divided by the blocking factor for index is 273 okay so in each block we can store 273 entry and we have total 7500 index entry so how many blocks we are going to need this is 7500 divided by 273 and we are going to use the ceiling function okay and here this uh, this is actually 28 block so we need total 28 blocks to store all the index entry okay to store all the index entry so 28 blocks now uh, we know that index field each of the index entry will be also ordered okay each of the index entry will be also ordered on the key field on the field that we are creating the index okay so here also you can use the binary search and what will be the block access okay using the binary search so it will be log 2 base bi okay the block access will be log 2 base bi which is log 2 base 28 okay and we are going to use the flooring function and this one is actually 4 point something but we are going to need 
five block axis okay so I'm going to use a additional additional slide okay so this is the continuation of our last example so number of blocks to store all the entry is we need 7500 entries and in each block we can store 273 entries okay and this is 28 blocks all right and as we are implementing the binary search the number of block access and we are going to do the block access on the indexing field right so as we as we know that now when we are going to look for item we are going to look for an item in the indexing entry then we are going to actually find the block pointer and following the block pointer we are going to fetch the block okay so the number of block access will be now log 2 base bi which is log 2 base 28 and this value is 4 point something but we are using the ceiling function so it will be 5 block access fetch the appropriate index entry okay so here is one extra thing we have to remember now let's uh, how this is working so we have uh, how uh, when we are going to find the appropriate index entry from this all the index entry we need five block access okay now five block access now when we find the appropriate index entry what actually we are going to do we are going to follow the block pointer and then we are going to access uh, then we are going to access the block where our record is okay so this five block access means using the five, bo five block access we can actually find the appropriate index entry that we are going to need then we are going to need an additional block access by following that we can access the block where our original records are okay so the number of total block access is actually we are going to add one with it equals to five plus one block access which is six okay we need six block access to store to find the entry with the primary indexing so let's tell you again why actually we are adding one because these five block access this using the binary searching uh, using the binary searching these five block access we are going to use to find the appropriate index entry when we find the appropriate index entry then we are going to follow the block pointer and using the block pointer we are going to access the block access the block where we have the original data file okay and we are going to access the block we are going to fetch that in our main memory okay in our primary memory so this block access is the additional one block access okay so this one we are going to add one with the uh, with the number of block access to fetch the index entry and we are going to add one to fetch the original block where our record is okay so it will take total six block access so we can compare now without the indexing it is going to need 13 block access or uh, with the indexing it is going to need six block access okay and we can see the improvement there